attention claim to the wounded are settled by the Veterans Administration before the men leave the hospital. The Purple Heart is a highly respected decoration. The pensions and decorations are the answers to only a few of the veterans' needs. For the men who are going to be discharged, the biggest question of all is raised. What about a job? What about a job? That's the question a representative of the War Manpower Commission asks the men who are going to be discharged as soon as they are well enough to be interviewed. What kind of a job do you want? What kind of a job do you think you're qualified for? What part of the country do you want to work in? The information the soldier gives here is forwarded to the United States Employment Office in his hometown. It's their business to know of every available job in the area and to see that the veteran gets the one he wants. By the time a soldier is discharged, he has the first installment of his $300 mustering out pay in his pocket. He will receive the other two installments, $100 each, on the second and third month after his discharge. And on the day that he walks down the ward for the last time, the machinery that will help him to find a job has already begun to work. Goodbye, you lucky stiff. Where are you going first? A bar? A chop house? A ballpark? Not yet. The first place a discharged veteran returns to is the last place a lot of soldiers saw in civilian life. And to secure his legal rights, the ex-soldier reports to his local draft board within 40 days after his discharge. If the soldier has been injured, the Veterans Administration takes on the responsibility of giving the veteran an education. Available to all men are the war training courses administered by the War Manpower Commission. Through this agency, the doors of schools and colleges all over the country are open, tuition-free. Or if you want to learn a trade, your training will be paid for under the same program. Before the war, Peter Muscover was a salesman. He saw action in Tunisia and Sicily, and after his discharge, he wanted to learn a trade. The government pays the bill. Coming back, a lot of men tell the U.S. Employment Service that they want to change their jobs, and some of them were unemployed when they were drafted. Some of them learn trades in the Army that they want to practice in civilian life. The United States Employment Service places these men. A clerk drove half-tracks in the infantry, and now he wants to be a truck driver. A lot of men who never rode in a plane before they put on a uniform now want to take up aviation. That's ex-private Robert Butler. I was with the infantry during the battles of Sicily where I was wounded. When I got back to the States, the United States Employment Service got me this job, an engine overhaul. I'm doing now what I always wanted to do. The problems of Robert Butler, the problems of returning veterans to their rightful place in civilian life are secondary only to the work of winning the war. These problems are being weighed in New England town meetings, in Midwestern barber shops, in government agencies, organizations of employers, union headquarters, in backyards, and in the highest offices of the country. The Civil Service Commission and most employers are giving veterans preference over other job applicants and a lot of veterans have gone into defense industry. Men who have lost their ships, men who have seen how battle can consume and destroy vital material, men who were wounded in combat know the importance of the weapons they are making. That's Salvatore Grimaldi. He was a sergeant with combat engineers in Tunisia. Before the war, I did a lot of boxing. And I planned to be a boxer after I got out. But I was hit in Tunisia, and I lost my left arm and three fingers of my right hand. When I was discharged, I applied at the U.S. Employment Service for a job. I applied on Friday and started work on Monday as a spot checker. It's a good job, the pay is good, so a chance for promotion. In a couple of weeks, I'm going to marry the girl I left behind when I went overseas. The way I figured this out, these are some of the things we're fighting for. 
Grimaldi spent a couple of years in Africa waiting for this day. His luck was worse than some, better than others. But it's not a question of luck that secures him and his children the prospect of a peaceful life. That's what the sergeant was fighting for. They'll be shipping us out soon. From the equipment, it looks like the South Pacific. This is confidential. So I'm staking this past the sensor. Yeah, 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 yeah. 